Tonight, Canadian cities lit up in green to commemorate the victims of the Quebec mosque shooting. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Aisha Ashraf. Today is the 114th day since Israel started its indiscriminate war on Palestine, despite an interim order by the International Court of Justice that Israel must prevent genocidal acts in its war with Hamas, Israel continues its incessant offensive on civilians. Israel has killed almost 200 Palestinians and injured hundreds since this past Saturday. The Palestinian Health Ministry reports 33 overnight casualties in central Gaza's Nusayra refugee camp due to Israeli shelling. The shelling also hit a United Nations school sheltering displaced people. Israeli forces killed three Palestinians and injured four at Al Amal Hospital in southern Gaza. The victims were trying to move a woman's body on the premises. The Palestine Red Crescent Society says Israeli attacks continue near the hospital. Media reports say Israeli tanks have surrounded the hospital, displacing Palestinians seeking shelter inside. Israel's offensive in Khan Yunis continues forcing more Palestinians into overcrowded Rafah city. In Dura, south of Hebron, an Israeli offensive has resulted in two deaths and two injuries. Israel has ordered the residents of Gaza City, the Al Shati refugee camp, and neighborhoods of Sheikh Radwan and Tel Al Hawa to flee to Deir al Bala. The call indicates these areas will be stormed by Israeli forces. At the time of writing, the Palestinian death toll stands at 26,422. Another 8,000 Palestinians are presumed dead under the rubble. 65,087 Palestinians have been injured. Israel's revised death toll from Hamas's attacks stands at 1,139. Twelve Israeli ministers from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party have proposed a plan to displace Palestinians and resettle Jews in the Gaza Strip. At a return to Gaza conference in Jerusalem, a plan was presented to re-establish 15 Israeli settlements and create six new ones on destroyed Palestinian communities. The conference was organized by the right-wing Nahala organization. The organization is known for promoting Jewish-only settlements considered illegal under international law. Far-right ministers Ithmar ben Gavir and Bezalel Smotrich delivered supportive speeches. A viral video of ben Gavir and Smotrich dancing together at the conference has received backlash. A human rights lawyer says the video is evidence of non-compliance with the International Court of Justice's order to prevent genocide. Israeli forces withdrew from Gaza in 2005. Its future intentions regarding the besiege enclave remain unclear. The U.S. has criticized statements from Smotrich and Ben Gavir advocating resettlement in and around Gaza. A federal judge in Oakland, California, is reviewing a lawsuit against President Joe Biden. The lawsuit was filed by American Palestinians and rights groups. The suit cites Biden's failure to prevent genocide in the Gaza Strip. The plaintiffs argue that Biden violated international and federal law by not taking action to stop the deaths of their family members in Gaza. Despite attempts by the Biden administration to dismiss the case, U.S. District Judge Jeffrey S. White allowed a live hearing. Omar al-Najjar from Gaza gave an emotionally charged testimony, describing the suffering of those trapped in Gaza. Judge White says the case is the most challenging in his 27-year career. He has assured the Palestinian witnesses that he would carefully review their testimonies. The plaintiffs seek an injunction to halt military aid and diplomatic support to Israel during its Gaza siege. This case follows South Africa's submission to the International Court of Justice accusing Israel of genocide in Gaza. The case marks a growing legal battle against Israel's actions. The Council on American-Islamic Relations has strongly criticized Republican Nancy Pelosi for connecting pro-Palestinian protesters to Russia. During a recent CNN interview, Pelosi said that some protesters are spreading the message beneficial to Russian President Vladimir Putin. She said these protesters may have financial ties to Russia. National Executive Director Nahad Awad from the Council on American-Islamic Relations has condemned Pelosi's comments. Awad calls the comments unsubstantiated smear. He's expressing concern about their authoritarian undertones. Awad has urged Pelosi and other political leaders to respect the will of the American people. He says politicians should advocate for a ceasefire in Gaza instead of making baseless accusations. Several countries, including Canada, the U.S., the U.K., 
Italy, Australia, Finland, and the Netherlands have suspended funding for the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine refugees. The move comes in response to allegations of involvement of some of its staff members in Hamas's attacks. Norway and Ireland have chosen to continue their support for the agency. The Palestine Authority has condemned the decision. It is calling the move, quote, collective punishment. It has accused these countries of adopting double standards. The United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees says it has terminated contracts of the employees allegedly involved in the attack. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has appealed to these countries to continue the funding. He says the funding is critical to provide aid needed to 2 million civilians in Gaza. Canada says it stands firmly behind the call for a lasting ceasefire in Gaza. However, it says it does not endorse South Africa's petition against Israel at the International Court of Justice. A recent statement by Canada's Foreign Minister, Melanie Jolie, says Canada is committed to upholding Israel's right to exist and defend itself within the boundaries of international law. She condemns the Hamas attack on October 7th, the loss of life and acts of violence. The statement says Canada acknowledges the World Court's vital role in maintaining the international rules-based order. However, Jolie says Canada's support does not equate to accepting the premise of South Africa's case. Jolie says there is a need for a balanced ceasefire. She has urged Hamas to release prisoners, cease using civilians as shields, and lay down their arms. She has also called on all parties to ensure unhindered access for essential humanitarian relief to civilians. A Canadian Palestinian journalist, Mansour Shuman, who has been documenting humanitarian efforts in Gaza, is reported missing. A member of his support team says the team lost contact with him last Sunday. The team received information that Schumann was last seen at Nasser Hospital in southern Gaza, heading towards Rafa. Reports are emerging that he was taken hostage en route Rafa by the Israeli forces. Muslim News Canada has not been able to verify these reports. Global Affairs Canada is aware of the situation and is closely monitoring the situation. Schumann, who previously worked in oil and gas consulting in Calgary, is the father of five children. He stayed in Gaza to document the war and its impact. During his stay, he has been interviewed by Muslim Network Television, among other mainstream media outlets. His family and supporters are anxiously awaiting any updates on his whereabouts. Today is the anniversary of the 2017 deadly shootings at the Islamic Cultural Center of Quebec City. The Islamophobic attack left six men dead and many injured in St. Foy. Seventeen children lost their fathers. The day is referred to as a National Day of Remembrance of the Quebec City Mosque Attack and Action Against Islamophobia. In a statement, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says the solidarity of Canadians extends beyond the fallen and the survivors. The statement says the tragedy altered the lives of Canadians in Quebec and other parts of the country. Google Canada is marking the anniversary as one of the biggest Islamophobic events in Canada with a picture of a green square pinned up in its search page. The green square is meant to represent the carpet where the victims stood to pray that day. Several politicians and rights advocates, including Governor General of Canada Amira al Khawabi and Amnesty International have issued statements remembering the tragic loss of lives. Public buildings across major Canadian cities have lit up in green to mark the anniversary. Manitoba Muslim Magazine has marked its 25th anniversary this month. The magazine was founded in 1999 by Ismail Mukhtar. Over the years, the publication has evolved from a black and white newsletter into a glossy printed and online magazine. Originally intended as a short-term project, Mukhtar took over the role of editor when the initial editor could not continue. Mukhtar credits the support of over 40 volunteers for the magazine's publication. It serves as a historical archive, chronicling the growth of Manitoba's Muslim community, which now numbers between 25,000 to 30,000 people. The magazine addresses critical topics like raising children, mental health, Islamophobia, and cultural gaps between newcomer parents and their children. It also discusses international issues affecting the community. Despite occasional criticism, Mukhtar aims for objectivity while reflecting the diverse perspectives of the community. 
The magazine is funded through advertising and support from the Manitoba Islamic Association and can be accessed online at miaonline.org. Muslims and Jews from Bosnia have come together in Srebrenica to jointly commemorate International Holocaust Remembrance Day. They advocated for compassion and dialogue amidst the Israel-Hamas conflict. The event was organized this past Saturday by the center dedicated to preserving the memory of Europe's only acknowledged genocide since the Holocaust. The gathering emphasized the shared history of persecution between the communities of Muslims and Jews. Hussein Kavazovic, the head of Bosnia's Islamic community, stressed the need to stand united against rising anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. Menachem Rosenstaft, a child of Holocaust survivors, also addressed the gathering. He highlighted several instances of mutual aid between Bosnian Muslims and Jews during times of crisis. Both leaders signed the Srebrenica Muslim Jewish Peace and Remembrance Initiative. As per the agreement, the two communities are committed to collaboration during crises. The agreement says they will maintain open communication, remember past genocide victims, and reject bigotry. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not for profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit MuslimNetwork.tv to donate now so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad.